day five, leaving Salt Lake City, headed for Las Vegas, gonna be probably, so yesterday I was talking about how day four was gonna be the hardest day because it was the most miles and it was gonna be hot. However, I'm pretty sure today is gonna be the worst day. Oh, wait, I said that all wrong. Now you probably can't see anything because the sun is in your face, but you're getting the genuine experience. Also, yesterday for most of the video, bugs were covering my helmet, including my visor and my camera. So again, your inability to have a clear view uh, is the authentic experience. Thankfully, it's all cleaned off now and we are good to go. Uh, I said that uh, day three was probably going to be my hardest day. Uh, it was the longest miles and it was super hot and there was no lane splitting and there was terrible traffic in Denver. But today, I've got to ride through uh, the open desert in 110 plus degree heat for seven hours. So I think it might actually be uh, considerably worse. Goodbye Rocky Mountains. You were beautiful from a distance. I had hoped to ride through you, but never got the chance. I didn't realize that I-80 actually sort of circumvents the Rockies and goes through like a dip between them, so I didn't get to experience a ride through the Rockies properly. But that's alright because it probably saved me a ton of time, which was of the essence yesterday. I am late again. I got another late start. I didn't get to bed late until late last night because I went to a brewery yesterday in Salt Lake City. They actually have a couple of nice breweries here. The one I went to is called Epic Brewing, and I had a great time there. Uh, the, the nice lady and man who were tending bar were awesome. And I happened to stumble across a couple of nice gentlemen, one of whom is actually from my uh, the city where I live in Orange County. So we got to talking. Uh, he was there on business, and then another guy came in who was also a motorcyclist who was touring through the area, sort of. He rode out here to take some adventure riding classes, which sounds really awesome. So he recommended a few places to me, and I'll be checking those out as soon as I get the time and money. So, anyway, when we were done at, the, at Epic Brewing, there's another brewery that's like one block away easily walkable called proper brewing so we just walked over there and then spent like another two hours drinking so I was out until far too much later than I should have been and then slept fewer hours than I should have so I'm leaving at uh, it's about 7 a.m. that I'm leaving local time but I'm gaining an hour today crossing a time zone line so I'll gain the lost hour back so I'm not in as bad of shape as I had originally felt like I was yeah, this is what I need. More traffic in another city where I still can't lane split. Ugh, I guess it's as good an opportunity as any to talk about Salt Lake City because I had an interesting time here. Had some interesting interactions with people. Uh, there are some people living here that I would describe as normal, but most of them, most of like the random people on the street uh, I found to be somewhat odd in demeanor. It's like, normally if I go to a new place and people act differently, I probably wouldn't point that out, but the people here seem like unduly paranoid and uh, fearful of interaction with strangers. Like, I'd see people, I'd meet people walking on the sidewalk and like, when I pass them by, like, I guess in LA, if you walk by somebody on the street and you don't know them, there's a small chance that you'll like, make eye contact and like give a friendly nod to them but if you don't then they, you know people just kind of go about their business and it's fine but in salt lake city everybody that i came across on the sidewalk when i was walking around sort of you know very pointedly was looking at me and when i made eye contact looked away like they were nervous about something and i don't think i look like too dangerous of a, like i don't look any different than i do when i walk around la or phoenix or albuquerque or anywhere else People here just, uh, I don't know, they don't seem to feel safe around each other, for the most part. Like the people, like-minded people that I stumbled across in breweries and things, like they were chill, they were cool. 
Uh, incidentally, they are not from Utah. Although the bartenders were from Utah because they live here, but... Just made my first gas stop here, south of Provo. Nothing much to report so far, other than the fact that uh, there's a lot of really beautiful scenery here in Utah. I think I'm going to see more before the day is done. It's uh, a truly lovely state. Lots of wonderful nature to observe here, despite any weirdness with the people who live here. And uh, the weather's been nice so far. I expected it to be hot pretty much from the beginning, but actually it's been nice so far this morning. It's kind of cool. Nice cool temperatures, at least through these grasslands. I think once I get out into the open desert, it's going to get brutally hot pretty quick. But I'm enjoying the nice moderate weather for now. Just made an executive decision. I guess every decision I make is executive because I'm the only one on this trip. But Triple uh, X Deadhead, fellow moto vlogger, if I remember correctly, specifically remember, uh, recommended Kolob Canyon as some place I should check out if I have the chance. Uh, confusing. So, I'm gonna stop by here and have a quick look and try and figure out what's going on here. Entrance fee required. I had a peek at the map and it looks like the road up is only about two miles, so it might be worth stopping and having a look. Wow. So, it's $25 just to drive up. Did not know that. I'm afraid I'm going to have to skip Kolob Canyon on this trip. If it was an investment of time and it was an awesome enough road, I think I would be willing to make myself a little later to Vegas in order to see it, but an investment of time and $25 entrance fee for like a half hour of fun uh, under these particular circumstances I'm gonna have to give it a pass but I will go ahead and check it out on people's videos and stuff so that I can have an idea of what I'm missing and if I ever come through here with a little more spare time then maybe I'll hit it up for myself because I know uh, things like this like national parks those kind of views just you never get the same experience from videos and pictures that you do from actually visiting those places yourself. So I would like to visit it, but uh, it's just not going to work out on this trip. This is it! The last gas stop. From here on out, I should have enough to get to Vegas. Although it looks like I'm going to arrive approximately four hours before they will allow me to check in. Can't forget my glasses. I know how cool these look, but they're prescription. They're more than just, uh, they give me more than just a pretty face. I actually need them to see. All right. Look out, Vegas. Here Motor Merc come. Look out Vegas. Motor look out Vegas. Here comes Motor Merc. My girlfriend and I actually just went to Zion and Bright. I may have mentioned this already. But it was gorgeous. It's a lot of scenery that looks sort of like this, except more and bigger and better. It's starting to get too hot on the bike. Uh it's getting well not quite lightheaded, but that sort of like there's this feeling of tiredness that you start to feel when you start getting too hot on a long ride where it feels like, I don't know how to describe it, like an artificial tiredness. So I'm stopping by here. I bought this 10 pound bag of ice, which I'm gonna literally just shove the entire thing in my jacket because I'm still more than an hour outside of Vegas and it's getting really, really hot. So we'll see how this 
if this helps. Well, you're never going to believe this. I just discovered that the power cable for my camera came off of, uh, came unplugged from my helmet while I was riding without me noticing, became flung down under the bike, got caught in the chain, and all chewed up, but somehow didn't get lost on the road, and the chain is fine, just the cable is all lax, so no more charging cable. So I'm just going to have to record, re oh, the heat, this is what the heat is doing to me. I'm just going to have to record sparingly and turn the camera off when I'm not using it to conserve battery. So, here's this bag of ice. I'm gonna shove it in my jacket. If it fits, let's see what happens. I sort of expect it to melt before I even get to Vegas. But we'll see. Oh, it doesn't fit in my jacket. I'm too fat. I turn my jacket into fatty mode. Come on, you stupid thing. Burning up. Come on. There we go. Fatty mode activate. Not too much better, it seems. 10 pound bag is a lot of ice as it happens. Oh my god, I could feel like I could taste the salt water dripping into my mouth, sweating in this heat. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. It's gonna work. It's working. Sort of is working. Oh, yeah. Ah. Bag of ice on my belly. That is nice on my belly. Ah, oh, God, these glasses are f***ing hot now. Now all I need is to find the freeway, which looks like it is over there. Let's go. Now the bike won't start. Ah, it does that sometimes when it's super hot out. I don't like it. It's nerve-wracking because when it's hot out like this, is not when I want to be stranded. It's the bike that won't start. God, this ice is actually kind of hurting. It's too cold. Well, hopefully once I get moving, I'll have like a nice mix of hot and cold. And even out. Oh, there we go. Once I lean forward on the bike, the ice leans forward in my jacket so it's not touching me. So that's good. Here we go. Retard on a bike with a bag of ice in his jacket. <sighs> Ooh, it's dripping down my leg all cold. It's kind of a shock. I'm gonna have freezer burn by the time I get to the hotel. Oh, fuck. sakes. Now my stomach and my balls hurt from the ice. And my hands and my feet hurt from the burning, burning heat. I'm looking for a bank so I can withdraw some money. Uh, Windows phone failed me, so I'm hoping that the plain old internet will help me now. I just looked up Bank of America. Oh, Bank of America locations on their website. They've led me to a new spot, so I'm going to try that out. But surface street riding is causing my bike to overheat. The light's not on right now, but it, I have seen it on for the first time ever today. And uh, I am just hoping the bike gets me to my hotel where I can let it rest overnight before I start again tomorrow. Kind of excited to see if this officer does anything from his perch on the sidewalk. I guess I'll never know. Come on, bank, bank, bank. Bank, bank, bank. Where's this bank at? Where's this bank at? There it is. Yes. Bank. Thank God. I need some cash to throw around in Vegas. This is where the money comes from. 
So I am glad that I found the bank, but since I am three hours early for check-in, I have a feeling that uh, that's not an ATM card. I have a feeling that they're not going to let me get my room, so I've got to figure out what to do with all my stuff for three hours while I wait for them to get my room ready. This is the only hotel I've ever been to where check-in time isn't until 4 p.m. It's fairly upsetting. Yes? Receipt? No. 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 So I don't know. I'm going to head over there and ask them if they if there's anything they can do to get me in sooner because God, I, I really don't want to be walking around Vegas for three hours dressed like this, carrying all my like l soft luggage and my backpack and everything. So, let's see if they can help me out. My hopes are not high, but you never know. It doesn't hurt to ask. So far, technically, I showed up to all of my hotels earlier than the appointed check-in time. And so far, all of them have been able to help me out with an early check-in, with the exception of the first one. So, I'm hoping that this hotel will follow the majority trend and allow me to get checked in early. Yeah, see, there's that overheat light. Oh, jeez. Get some air run running through this real quick. Come on, old girl. Don't let me down. Yeah. I guess I can just take Las Vegas Boulevard all the way down and we can see the sights along the way between here and the hotel. That should make a nice piece of video, perhaps. A weirdo riding down the strip with a bag of ice in his jacket should fit right in. Yet another state that believes it is wiser than it is, and has proclaimed lane splitting to be illegal. I will not stop bitching about it until lane splitting is legal everywhere, and if they don't legalize it then I will bitch about it until the day I die. It's actually cooler with the visor down because I don't have 120 degree heat blasting me in the face. Las Vegas Boulevard, in this part of town, does not seem like the nicest area. I'm gonna ride out some of this momentum. The overheating always seems to happen when I'm stopped. So I'm gonna try and coast into this red light. Give it a little time, a little more time moving. Some extra air going over the radiator. This thing is water cooled and has fans and still dying in the heat. This is just no good. I think this area used to be pretty bad. Uh, it's getting better now. There are some cool spots around here. It's sort of getting gentrified-ish. There's a really cool lounge I know around here. This area in here on the right has got a lot of uh, nice shopping, some restaurants. Not that nice, I guess, but at least clean. Reasonably uh, not scummy. And over on the left, you've got some bars that are kind of like hipster, some punk, but like generally not, not, not too divey by my reckoning. And there's one lounge that's like a speakeasy, really nice place, reservations only, small, quiet place where you can get some of the best cocktails on earth. And that's not just my opinion, that's lots of people's opinion. So that's one of the places I was thinking of going today, but we'll see if I can manage to work it out because I'm going to need a shower first. I'm meeting a, somebody for lunch-ish, dinner-ish as well, uh, a fellow writer. Uh, as many of you know, I am trying to write a book. Uh, the guy I'm going to meet is an actual published author, writer, a playwright, I believe, as well, among other things. Um, 
but uh, we also just sort of hit it off uh, after talking a couple of times. So uh, he lives in Vegas, and I asked if he had some time to get together for a meal or a drink or something. And he said, yeah. So we're going to see about trying to make that work, make it happen. I was also hoping to catch the Copa America game today. Uh, this video is going to come out way after the fact, but today uh, USA is playing Argentina in, I believe, the semifinals of the Copa America. And I was hoping I'd get a chance to see that, but I have a feeling dinner with uh, some of the, this uh, writer fellow that I'll be enjoying some time with, uh, that might over, those, those things might overlap. So. I might not be able to watch the game, which is okay. I haven't watched any of the other Copa America games this year, so I will just read about it like I've done with the others. And I might not be able to go to the lounge either because it is a nice enough lounge that they do have a dress code, and all I have is like ratty motorcycling clothes that I brought for my trip. And I just, you know, stuff that I could sweat in and not worry about it. You know what? This is ridiculous. I am not prepared to sit in this traffic. We will see the strip uh, after taking the freeway to get there. I want to just get this over with, unfortunately. My Senna has been giving me some real trouble on this trip. It's got like, uh, it hasn't been pairing perfectly with the phone. That might actually be the phone's fault, but it's been having other problems like, uh, I think where the unit uh, connects, there's like, uh, if you know what it looks like, then you'll know what I'm talking about, but I'll try and describe it. Like the actual computerized unit pl like plugs into this frame, this like subframe, and that frame connects like the microphone and the speakers to the main unit through that, you know, through little connector. And that connector has not been making a good connection, and I've been losing speakers intermittently, losing the microphone, so I haven't been able to interact reliably with my phone through the Bluetooth. It just hasn't been uh, a good time with that particular device. I guess it's time to buy a new one, which is disappointing because I've only had the Senna for... Uh, I'm not on the freeway. Yeah, like after... Uh, this thing has only lasted me a little over a year, I think. Maybe two years? It's not, not good. Freeway, Las Vegas freeway, taking the freeway to my hotel. Freeway, taking the freeway. this retarded garbage. All red lights. Not even one person can go. Vegas! This is Vegas! There's the Bellagio! That one's famous. Oh, I don't know what you're doing, man. You're supposed to use a crosswalk. U-turn? That's no good. Oh, there's the... There's my hotel. The Holly Weird Planetarium. Wow. I think it's very confused as to where I am now. I gotta turn this thing off. Shut up. You are so irritating sometimes, you know that? I'm almost there. So almost. It's so almost I can taste it. Parking in Vegas is uh, going to change pretty soon here for a lot of people. It used to be free. Whoops, I went to the valet. Oh well. How do I get back to the self-parking? Go back out this way, I guess. Yeah, people are used to it being free, but for the first time, a whole bunch of Vegas hotels are initiating paid parking says service vehicles only, but there's like a thousand bikes parked here, so I assume it's okay. Okay. God, I'm such an amateur. Finally. All this gear is going to come off, and it's not going to help me because the ambient temperature is higher. 
than my body temperature and it's like 250% humidity <sighs> so I'm just headed on my way back to the hotel after hanging out with this guy I've been affectionately referring to as the author man I'm not referring to him by his real name because he told, well, he hinted at the fact that he prefers to keep his personal and uh, professional public lives separate, so I just refer to him as the author man. But basically, he is a published author, and he also has his hands in some other uh, media projects as well. Really cool guy, just loves getting, yeah, he loves working on creative projects, which is really cool. And one year I ran into him at Comic-Con when I was going to Comic-Con a lot. And we just got to talking when I visited him at his booth. And uh, we just hit it off. And we've always stayed in touch since then. And since I was coming to Vegas and I knew he lived here, I hit him up to see if he wanted to hang out. So he showed me a restaurant in the area that he really likes, which was awesome. Called Kane's Chicken. Delicious. Pretty much all they sell is chicken fingers, but they're really good chicken fingers. And other than that, we pretty much just shot the breeze for a few hours, and it was cool. He invited me back sometime, so hopefully I'll get the opportunity to visit him again. But, but yeah, getting out here was kind of a nightmare because it's so hot. And I was already kind of tired and dehydrated from the ride down to Vegas from Salt Lake City. So I, I'm sure, sure I was pretty close to heat stroke on the way out this afternoon in the full brunt of the sun. I was starting to feel lightheaded and like I was going to pass out on the bike. And then even when I got to Author Man's house, like standing in his kitchen drinking water, I still felt like I was going to pass out. But uh, after, yeah, after a few glasses of water and a nice big soda pop, at the Cane's Chicken Restaurant. I feel much better, and also the sun's going down now. It's a little darker. It's probably only 105 out right now. But that's a whole lot better than the 115 or whatever it was earlier. Those 10 degrees make a big difference. So I think I'll make it back to the hotel safely. I'm energized from dinner. And uh, yeah, oh, there's Vegas now. That's where I'm headed. So yeah, that's uh, just about going to do it for the Vegas leg of this trip. Uh, there's only going to be one video remaining in this Colorado series. It's going to be the final leg home from Vegas to LA. But for now, it's going to be a wrap. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.